Eric Packer, naturopath from New Zealand, author of Candida Crusher, creator of the Candida Crusher YouTube channel, and also creator of the Candida range of supplements. Thanks for checking out this series on irritable bowel syndrome. This video we're going to talk about tests and diagnosis of IBS. So medical practitioners have developed a set of specialized criteria to diagnose if you've got irritable bowel syndrome or not. One's called the Rome criteria where they're going to basically want to know if you've got pain or discomfort in the abdominal area for three days in a row, at least once per month for three month duration. That's what they're going to be asking you for. Then they're going to be asking you for um, if there's been a change in the frequency of stool or the consistency of the motions. Those are sorts of things that they look for. They're going to also going to be looking at your age. Like if you're an old guy like me over 50, well not old, but you know, getting on a bit. If you're 50 plus, uh, and you've had previously no kind of gut issues, that will raise one red flag. If you've had a sudden change in bowel motions all of a sudden and you're an old codger like me, bang, another flag goes up. If you've got rectal bleeding, a third flag goes up. Flags going up everywhere. It's like a soccer match. So they're going to be looking basically for change. So the big thing that they look for is stability. And if there was a change, that will raise a lot of flags age particularly. They're going to check for um, mucus, they're going to do a blood test and check for bleeding. They also may screen you for a celiac, uh, they may do a, like an antibody test uh, for celiac. They may check you out for an enzyme um, to make sure that you break lactose down properly. They could be doing a lactose test. They could do a breath test. Uh, <clears throat> some doctors will do a breath test to check for SIBO or bacterial, you know, small intestinal bacterial issues. Others may check for helicobacter. Then there's a series of um, other tests they may do. They may refer you then if they think, okay, well, you've passed all these and we've got a bit of a suspicion here, that they may send you to the gastroenterologist. And that's the guy who's got the cameras that go up all funny areas of the body. So gastroenterology is nothing like it used to be in the old days. I can remember when my dad had uh, yeast infection back in the 80s. Um, and the poor old guy, I mean, he loved ice cream. He would eat two liters of ice cream for lunch. He would eat a whole packet of cookies, you know, 30 cookies, uh, sometimes during the day, and then keep dunking them in coffee. So he'd have probably about 10 cups of coffee a day with two sugars in them, and then have lots of biscuits. You guys know what these ginger biscuits are? What do you call them? Ginger nuts, or you crack them and they've got their ginger taste. Dad loved those. In the coffee, in the mouth, bloating and gas as a result. What the hell is wrong with me? I've got a gut problem. Well, at those... At that stage in my life, I wasn't really studying natural medicine, but I knew about cause and effect. I said, Dad, it's those biscuits. Don't be an idiot. The doctor said there's nothing wrong with me. I'm going to go to the gastroenterologist. So he had a barium enema, and they pumped this foam in his bum, okay, into the colon. And often <clears throat> times what they, will do, what they will do then is do an abdominal x-ray to see, check for blockages and things like that. The doctor never even asked him about his diet. Didn't ask him about biscuits or sugar consumption or stuff like that. It's crazy. So that's called a barium enema, and that can also be uh, done. They'll, they'll use a, 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 a sigmoidoscope, so it's a very fine, flexible camera that gets inserted. It's not a problem. I've got a good friend who's a gastroenterologist, and I often talk about these kind of procedures, and um, I've got another friend who's a urologist, very cool guy, with a number plate, see me 2 p very nice guy. So <clears throat> there's a lot of really nice, um, helpful professional people out there. And it's very important if that you're concerned, especially uh, to get checked out properly, particularly if there's been like changes occurred very quickly and you're getting a little bit older. That's when it's even more important to get checked out. But if you've had a little bit of a history on and off for a long time, a stool analysis is often the first port of call I recommend, particularly if you're <clears throat> in your 20s, 30s or 40s. They reckon that females have got a higher incidence of irritable bowel syndrome. Younger uh, women, particularly, um, when it comes to guys, is three to one. But I see lots of guys with irritable bowel syndrome. I would see just as many males as females. So the point is, um, tests and diagnosis depend on the severity of the complaint, the duration of the complaint, the age. Those three factors in particular you know, need to be uh, taken into account. But uh, as usual, if you're worried, always get it checked out. Okay. Talk to somebody about it. Get a referral to someone who's good. Get things checked out. Uh, it's very important that you get the right uh, treatment uh, after the correct diagnosis. 
That's it for this video. Click on the link down below if you haven't already got my report. And stay tuned because I'm going to do another video right now on the best diet for irritable bowel syndrome. We'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.